haven't been here, and if you've come back, welcome back. We thank God for every one of you guys. We're called the Chosen. For it's called the Chosen because it says we didn't choose God, God chose us. Amen. And He chose the marred, the scarred, the hurt, the broken, the backslidden, the ones you would never think He would choose. I'm so happy our God don't judge like we judge. I'm so happy our God don't look at people like we look at people. Because we would never have a chance. Someone say amen. amen. Today our apostle that we're teaching about is Philip. Someone say Philip the finder. Someone say Philip the finder. John chapter 1 verse 42, 46 says that Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of Jonah, but you will be called Cephas, which means the, which means the rock or feet. And the next day, Jesus, watch this, decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip. Someone say, found Philip. Found and said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathaniel and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about his name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, Nathaniel explained, can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. Father, loosen your anointing and let us see you do amazing, marvelous, wonderful works in and through our lives now into the coming of Christ. In Jesus' name. Someone say amen. amen. Someone say amen and give him glory. Amen. So watch this. The first thing Philip does is when Jesus goes out of his way for him. I love this, Eric, because look what it says. It says, and Jesus decided to go to Galilee. Galilee was a port city. It was, it was a mixed breed. It was a lot of good Gentiles and all these things. You understand this by Philip's name. Philip is a Greek name. All other Jews had a Jewish name. But Philip had a Greek name. Right off the bat, that's not a good thing. Right off the bat, that's my job. Why would your mother and father name you a Greek name? All the Jews named their children based on a Jewish name that represented the Old Testament, the, the law, the prophets, or what they wanted them to be. So would say amen. So he already had a name that was shameful. He already had a name that represented disrespect to the Jewish community. He already had a, a, a place in a town that he lived in that was mixed with Gentile breed. But the Bible says Jesus had to go to Galilee. He decided to go to a person that was looked down upon in the religious community, looked down upon, frowned upon from his name, where he lived, where he was from. And he went personally, I love the person of Jesus, because he personally went to look for one that looked down upon, one that was ridiculed, one that, that, that was shameful, one that didn't make sense to be called and chosen for the greatest assignment in the universe to change the world. But I'm so happy Jesus decided to go after him because it gives me hope that Jesus can decide and has to decide to go after sinners like us that shamed them, hurt them, and sinned and blasphemed this thing. Isn't it amazing that Jesus Big sinners like us. Philip. Greek name from Galilee. And what's the next thing Philip does? You know what he does? He goes find someone. Someone say Philip the finder. Automatically. He's so excited that he goes find someone. It says we found him. The one that the law has spoke about. The one that the prophets have spoke about. He's Jesus of Nazareth, the living son of God. From Nazareth. Nazareth, the Daniel says. What good can come from Nazareth? Nazareth was a horse town. No, Nazareth was, you bleak and you'd be out of, out of that town. It's just a town you have to pass through to go to the town you really want to go to. But I'm so happy 
that God chooses those kind of places. Right. I'm so happy that he, he picks the foolish to count on the wise. He, he picks the beggarly elements to confound those strong, the Bible says. Jesus isn't like us, and I'm so happy he isn't, because he goes out of his way for sinners. He transforms places that no one would ever think could be transformed, and uses it for his glory. I want you to know for the glory of God, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your name. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what family you come from. It doesn't matter where you live. You are on Jesus' mind. And he says, you are the perfect candidate for my grace and my mercy and my calling and my plan and my purpose for your life. Say amen. amen. So he finds Philip. Philip finds Nathaniel. So I want to talk to you. In your Christian walk, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, 40 years, whatever it may be, when is the last time you found someone and brought them to Jesus? I didn't say bring them to a club. I didn't say bring them to a house party. I didn't say bring them golfing. I didn't say bring them to a church. I said bring them to Jesus. To say, I know you're going through some stuff. I don't know a lot. But I know this is what the Bible speaks about. I know there's peace. I know there's joy. I know there's blessing. I know there's anointing. I might not understand all of it, but what good can come from that little church in Winter Garden? That pastor is nervousing. The choir, they're
tell the father to say, Nathaniel, come with me, witness it. Because you're a man of integrity, Jesus said. You have a right name. You have right status. I'll kind of be behind you. And I'll, and I'll be with you. And many of us don't think we're good enough and we think we need someone else. But I want you to know, God thinks you're good enough. God loves you that much. Why, we were sinners and at our worst. He says, no son and no daughter, you got it all twisted. I want to use you. I want to use your brokenness, your hurt, your shame, your pain, your discouragement, your failure, your sin. I'll use all the good, the bad, and the ugly. So when you go to them, you ain't going to get glory at all. You're going to say, I'm a sinner, and you're a sinner. But two wrongs don't make a right, praise God. So let's repent from where we're at. Let's get to where we need to be. Let's get into the presence, the promise, the power, and the things of God for the glory of God. Come and see. This is what God wants to do. He wants to do it with you. When you go to John 6, when you go to John 6, you see that as Philip's tracking, he finds someone. But when you go to John 6, and I'm just going to reference it. There's a crowd of 5,000 men, not counting women and children, probably 50 to 20,000 people, scholars and theologians believe. And they're hungry. They've been there for three days. Jesus wants to feed them. And they're in Bethsaida, because Philip's from Bethsaida. And he says, Philip!
does get the watch. Kevin Phillip is imperfect. Phillip's a doubter like us, Dylan. He's, he's up and down. But he's still tracking with Jesus. And maybe you today, every time God wants to do something for you, and someone gives you a word, or you read something, or you get encouraged, your automatic word is, yeah, I know. Can't be done. I can't be. The devil's a liar, dude. It can be done. It will be done. All you have to do is have faith. Let me encourage you with it. Why we were sinners, he came and died. Why we was at our worst, he came to seek and save and find that which is right. I'm not playing golf.
to schedule some time with his well. Jesus says, I'm going to suffer. I'm sorry. But I gotta go if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. He says, I gotta go to the Father, he says. And then Philip says, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus says, Philip, how could you ask me that question? You've been with me this long. Philip's trying to find a father because he got dealt 
quote the main god of the Greeks were? Zeus. You know he was the god of David? Thunder. Why? 
John chapter 1 verse 40, you might have missed it. Here's what it says. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. I'm going to say it again. And he found the reason why we should be a finder and go after those who are lost. He why we was in our deepest, darkest, ugly sin and why we were sinners. God sent his son, only begotten of the Father. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Why? To find us and bring us back. He came to seek and find that which is lost. This is why we do the service of God. This is why we worship. No matter our, our fault finding, no matter our, our fear, Never 
stopped serving you. He never stopped worshiping you. He never stopped following you, even to the point of martyr's death. Someone say, Jesus. Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me. I have doubted. I have questioned. I have condemned myself. And I have thought many times you didn't hear and you wasn't there. Ask for my forgiveness today. I am a sinner. Wash me and cleanse me. Because I do believe you died. And on the third day, you rose, conquering death, sin, hell, and the grave. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. And help me seek and find that which is lost to bring them to you so you can save them and set them free. Use me, King Jesus, until you're coming again. Amen. And amen. And amen. Did you receive it? I said, did you receive it? As soon as you get this communion, could you find a place at this altar? Let's see God.